213-2655. My service number. Okay. Mark Kennedy, Staff Sergeant of the United States Marines, served in Vietnam to put himself through college. The older of six children, Mark Kennedy's parents couldn't afford to send him off to college. I tested and everything, and they told me that I was uh, qualified to do anything I wanted in the Marine Corps. And I could work on jets or anything. And I said, can I just walk around and be a Marine? You know, because I had always thought if I ever went into the military, I wanted to be a Marine. And he said, well, I can guarantee you uh, the infantry if that's what you want. And uh, he said, but you're qualified for a lot more. And I said, no, I'd just as soon be in the infantry. And so I went in, I enlisted in the Marine Corps to go into the infantry. And my dad wasn't too excited about it because Vietnam was just starting up. He was afraid that going into the infantry, I'd just be cannon fodder in Vietnam. And I didn't think so. And I told him that the Marines, uh, trained you better than that, and I would listen, pay attention during the training. Mark began his journey when he enlisted in March of 1965. I was first deployed, I, I went in January of 1966. I enlisted in March of 65, in January of 66, I went to uh, Camp Pendleton, California to go through lock-on with the 2nd Battalion, 26 Marines, because we went to Vietnam all together on a ship. Uh, the USS Henrico is the one that I was on. And we went uh, by way of the Philippines for SEER training and Okinawa to the northern training area uh, for jungle warfare training. And then we went, went into Vietnam, pulled into Da Nang Harbor in uh, late May and early June of 1966. And, and we landed and then we deployed. Uh, we spent a day or two in, in Da Nang and then we deployed out to uh, uh, to the west out by the mountains at, in, near uh, Cambodia and uh, at an old French fort in the Hill 22 and 22 X-ray is where my company was at and my platoon specifically was on Hill 22. Mark became a part of the Special Landing Forces. He was deployed to ships where he believed he would be able to stay on the ship a majority of the time and eat hot chow each and every day. But they never really adequately explained the concept of uh, of helicopters to us. So they would take us off the ship and land us in a hot spot somewhere in Vietnam. And then when we got through there, there might be another hot spot. Well, the helicopters would come and instead of taking us back to the ship, we'd go to another hot spot. And so if we got to spend two days a month on the ship, it was generally because our uniforms were so grubby and our gear was so filthy that we needed to go back for rehab and wait for the next hot spot. He was entrusted with a map due to his ability to minimize casualties while escaping ambushes. One daytime patrol, however, would change his life. We, we knew this guy didn't fit. He was not from that village and we just knew he didn't fit. So I started over to talk to him and he took off running. He chased me, ran me into a trench line. And uh, what I mean is, there was a trench line that went down and then it turned to the left and then it went away again like in a Z. And he jumped into it and I ran up and looked and he was already going this way. So I jumped into it and it was about a little bit wider than my shoulders and about up to my neck in depth. And uh, so I ran down to the corner here and I looked around he was laying down on the ground looking around the other corner, looking back this way, down that way. And so I talked to him and told him to stand up and to surrender Chu Hoi. And he, uh, he ducked his head back. So when he did that, I went ahead and took my M16 and fired a few rounds uh, to keep him back. And then I stepped around. And when I stepped around, I heard a, a bitch box, uh, a Claymore bitch box. They call it a bitch box because when you hear it, it's a bitch. You're in trouble. I knew what was happening and I got one step in and saved my life. And eventually he realized that they were getting close. Now he was already getting hit with shrapnel. And he realized though that he was gonna to have to get out of there. So he jumped up and tried to climb up and get out of there. And when he did, I, I just stepped up with my rifle and drilled him. After Staff Sergeant Kennedy killed the man, he was medevaced out. He had requested, however, to keep anything that the man had had on him so he could take a look at it. 
Mark was given a letter that would give him a better look on life, even after the Marines. This came out of his pocket along with other letters and it was just, and you could see how he had, how it was, he had sweat from carrying it and everything. And, and uh, it, he was just like us. His, he probably had trouble keeping things dry just like we did. And, uh, and you could tell that by his letters, but he, he had three or four letters on him that they let me have back. And I've had people that ask me, uh, well, why do you want to keep that picture? And, and, and they asked me, do I feel bad that I killed those kids' father? Uh, you have to see my grandkids and my kids to appreciate my answer to that. I have no remorse at all. I was doing my job, and believe it or not, I don't have any ill will towards him. He was doing his job. He tried to kill me. He just got the worst of the deal that day. And I don't feel bad. And sometimes I look at that picture of him and his children, and then I look at pictures of my, my kids and my grandkids, and I thank God that I was the one that finished on top that day. And if I ever get a chance to go back to Vietnam in Den Bon District, I plan to take the picture with me and ask around, and does anybody know where his kids are at today? Yeah. I'm not gonna make it a mission, but if somebody came up tomorrow and said, hey, would you like to go back to Vietnam? Yeah. I'll go.